I have a confession to make. We went out last week to Aaron to do some filming there, which I was hoping to make into a video to put up this week. But being honest, I didn't like anything in it at all. Nothing whatsoever. This is new to me. So I decided that I would edit it during the week and looking back on it, I don't like one bit of it. Well, there's one bit that I like and that was filmed on Friday. That was just a wee bit of B-roll that I liked and it was to introduce the new GoPro. that I purchased to help me make some of these videos. But the other thing I noticed with the video as well, when I was out recording it, it wasn't me. It wasn't my personality. I was standing talking and, today we are in Pernmill, today we are in Arran, oh what a lovely view. That wasn't me. That's not my personality. Inspired by lots of other YouTubers and lots of other people and in each one of them that I watch I see them and I want to see more of them so I subscribe and I watch and I watch and I watch and they teach you the video making they teach you the photography travel vloggers love watching the travel vlogs so we see them as well and they go okay we're going here 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 all these places great plans great plans are made just by watching the YouTube videos for me it was the personality that drew me back to the videos, whoever I was watching. I, what I was learning was secondary and complementary to it, but it was the personality that was dragging me back in. I wanted to watch more and more and more of these videos and I found last week that when I was out filming in Aaron, the one that you're not going to see is that my personality never came across in it and whether it's a good personality or a bad personality, that's for you to decide. Uh, I'm passionate. It's all I can say, I'm passionate, I said it in the last video, I'll say it in this video and I'll probably say it again in many more videos. Just passionate about my subjects. If you like watching them and you like having a laugh at me, that's great. But I'll tell you, I'm actually enjoying doing these. We've just spent the last hour setting up this light. I've got the warm light here, I've got a cooler light over here, I've got the big octobox behind me. When it comes to the video inside, I am learning. I've got my head down and I am pushing forward trying to learn as much as I can and premiere with my cameras, the different cameras, and as I said, I bought the GoPro. For outside when I'm filming, so hopefully that'll help. Hopefully everything that I learn here, be watching more YouTube videos different, will add to the experience that you're getting uh, by watching these. So this technique is the one that I use at the beginning of my classes when we get into portraiture and it just allows the students to see simple ways of doing things. There is loads and loads of ways of doing skin softening and I think you should check out as many as you can. This one I'm going to show you because it is very very quick and very simple to do. As I say there's loads and loads of ways of doing this but it's a good starting point that allows you to see everything, in my opinion anyway. So without further ado Here's a quick two, three minute tutorial on skin softening. Okay, for the purpose of this, I've set a timer for three minutes. We'll see if we can do it in under three minutes. And remember, this is just a beginner's tutorial. It wouldn't be perfect because I'm going to try and get through this as quick as I possibly can. Timer starts now. Okay, I'm using a Mac. What I'm going to do is copy the layer twice. Jai Jai. And then I'm going to try it again, jai jai. Bottom layer I'm going to call blur. Top layer I'm going to call high pass. As I say, remember this is a, just a beginner's one. So I'm going to hammer right through this to, to let you get to see what's happening. And the blur layer, I'm going to go filter, blur, Gaussian blur. I'm going to go about four, four, for this, there's loads of a lot of detail in the skin. I'm going to click OK. I'm then going to create a hide all mask for that layer. Press the mask button, hold down at Alt. There we go, there's a black mask in that. I'm going to paint in white. I'm going to use a soft brush, third brush in, 
soft edges. I'm going to paint in white. X jumps between black and white, as you'll see here. So I'm going to paint in white, which means it will reveal what I've just done to that. Pressure-wise, I am going to go for about 70. Uh, I'm going to paint as quick as I possibly can. Uh, I'm leaving the eyes, leaving the lips, leaving the nostrils, being careful around the nose though because you need to see detail. Uh, underneath the lips, just there, and remember I'm brushing through this. Uh, it's just to give you a good idea. If you're doing this, if you're following this type, uh, this way of doing it, please take your time. And there we go. That's it. You can see it all appearing in the mask here. And I'm just going to paint down there. You'll notice that some of it's went white. That's what I've painted again. Watch, watch the mask reappearing. Right, we're going to go for that. We're going to leave it at that just now. Just a tiny bit in the eyes there. Never touching the actual eyes. Next, high pass. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to filter, other, high pass. 2.1 was a good one for me. I'm going to take it up to 2.6 just so that you guys can see this. Every image is different. Right, uh, time. How are we getting on with time? Let's go for overlay here. So the high pass overlay. If I zoom in, there you go. Watch this. See the difference? Okay, I'm turning that back off because I want to turn the opacity of this. We need to retain skin detail. Right, let's go for about 41. Let's flick that on and off. You'll see just that slight difference. It's a slight softening. All uh, right, high pass. Zoom back out. I'm going to hide the high pass layer. I'm going to hold down all, click the mask button. I'm only going to paint in using the white brush opacity but I'm going to take the opacity right up there's the three minutes I've missed it right okay I'll do this as quick as I can right three I'm painting the eyes touching the nostrils painting in the lips you can see it appearing over here on the mask I am going to very quickly as I'm doing this try and multitask here and turn that off at the same time and I manage that yes right so I've exceeded my three minutes but you get the idea with this Hopefully you get the idea that in no way at all is this going to be a finished image, but hopefully, as I say, you get the idea you can try this method as well. It's actually the high passing bar is probably the most basic of methods to do this. Uh, the skin softening, and as I say, that's why I'm using this one. Right, if I zoom in here, it's going to be near the four minute mark. Right, if I turn that off, Watch the eyes. See the eyes getting a wee bit sharper. You've got to be really, really careful with the eyes though because you don't want to make them look unreal. Right, I'm going to put the two of these by selecting them holding down shift into a group to let you see the before and after. As I say, the skin and this model doesn't need redone, but hopefully you can see just that slight difference within. Right, that was a really quick way, over the, over the three minute mark, but that was a really quick way to do skin softening in Photoshop. And that's using the Gaussian Blur and the High Pass method. Get into more detail when you're doing it, but have a go at it. It can be used for many different things, not just skin softening. Hopefully that made sense and hopefully you managed to follow along. As I say, it was a very simple technique, uh, quite effective, but it gives you a starting point and a good starting point as well. Uh, so if you've enjoyed this video and you want to see landscape uh, studio portraits, I've got one of them planned actually for the very near future. It's a full studio portrait session plus editing and it's a custom edit that the client's actually after and he's agreed to let me uh, use it in one of the YouTube videos so we'll see how that goes and the tutorials as ever if, if it's raining outside I can do a tutorial so hopefully you got that if you enjoyed this video please subscribe quick like because that really helps as well and hopefully I'll see you the next time thanks for watching last but not least these videos that I'm doing they're not intended to 
be instructional videos. They're just there to give maybe the beginners, maybe someone else, a wee bit of information to help them along their path as a photographer. I know I found it invaluable when I was watching other people and pick up the odd wee bit and add it to what I was already doing. Or when I was first starting out, I'd grab that wee bit and I'd go, oh, I never knew that. Oh, that's brilliant. That is absolutely brilliant. I wish I had known that before. So hopefully you'll get something from these videos. If you do, fantastic. Or if there's anything at all that you want me to maybe possibly do a video on, just ask below. As I say, I'm going to try my hardest to get one of these up every single week. Anyway, hopefully you get something from that and hopefully I'll see you again. Thanks for watching.